Did you know that Shams says the world is like a huge cauldron and something big is cooking in it? We don't know what it is. Everything we do, feel or think is an ingredient in that mixture. We need to ask ourselves, what are we adding to the cauldron? Are we adding resentments, animosities, anger and violence? Or are we adding love and harmony? This year I wanted to make a vegetarian treat for the New Year's. And it's gonna be this creamy basil hummus with all the details of making a hummus great together with something which could be a great replacement for falafels. And it's a Refika invention and it's much easier to do and maybe more tasty than falafels themselves. And this is to start the year full of goodness. You might ask what this script that I read about. The thing is, this script is from a book called The 40 Rules of Love. And the writer Elif Shafak is an old friend of mine going way back over 20 years. I was a small kid in the university. She was a very young writer and that's how long we meet. When I was writing this book, her famous book, 40 Rules of Love, and if you haven't read it, please read it. It's great. It came out and as a celebration, I made a dinner for her. She was vegetarian then and I wanted to make a vegetarian meatball, eat ball, which is as tasty. And, and in Turkey, as you know, we have over 350 different meatball recipes. So I got that knowledge of how to make a great meatball and replaced the meat with chickpeas and made a great eat ball. So today we're gonna have the great hummus and we're gonna also have the magical eat balls. And this script is in the book because in the book there's more than recipes. There's the philosophy, there's the beauty of Istanbul. And also this recipe is an old one, so it's also in the book. I know many of you guys are buying it through Etsy and Amazon and I'm really, really thankful. And I'm trying to actually sign almost all the books that go abroad. Sometimes I cannot meet the expectation, but thank you. What do we need for the eat ball? Here we have 400 grams of chickpeas, some parsley, some dill, halloumi cheese, an onion, garlic, eggs and breadcrumbs and some flour. And that's basically it. First off, I have this one big onion and I'm going to cut it in chunks and add it to the processor. When you want to buy a processor, look at the power and look at whether it has two knives or four knives. When it's four knives, it's much better. Where the knives are close to the bottom as well, that affects the power. And I also add the chickpeas first. Don't you peel them off? Today, because it's near New Year's and we're really, really busy, Burak did the peeling. And if you ask, how do you peel the skins it's like this? This has a not so good aftertaste. It's not a necessity for this recipe, but for the hummus, it's a necessity. So actually, if you don't peel it at all, it's okay. But to do it, I have a small technique. It's in this video. You just put it in this rice cleaner and just like rub it. Then the skins float. When you pour it on the side, they all get collected and it takes a minute to peel all the skins. And here I have four cloves of garlic. And I also add these. I'm not going to make it a puree. I'm just like making it work like a few seconds and have a look. This is actually what I'm looking for in life. And here it's very hard to give a size this much of parsley and this much of dill. If you're not a big dill fan, you don't have to use it, but it's really good. I also cut it into chunks like this. I don't throw away the stems until they're really thick. Otherwise they all get in. Whoppa! And that's basically it. I love how this thing smells. I don't throw away anything. Now it's over 10 years that I'm doing cooking in front of you guys. Normally we don't show these kind of things. Now it's very important not to throw away anything. And I want to show you that little details of how to maximize the use of things. Now, I don't want to dirty up another thing. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put everything here. So two eggs, fun way of Crack the egg, put one finger here, one finger here, and press it with your thumb and open it. Whoa. And put the eggs. Then three tablespoons of breadcrumbs. You can use panko if you like. One tablespoon of flour. Does it matter what flour? Plain flour. What flour does here is it binds it together. That's like the negative side of related to falafel in that sense, gluten-free. This one cannot be. When it comes to spices, one teaspoon of black pepper. The cumin gives it a meaty flavor, so a lot. Actually, three teaspoons. Hey, okay. 
and one heap teaspoon of salt and one heap tablespoon of red pepper paste. If you don't have red pepper paste, salsa it could be. And I mix it all together. I believe the taste goes through the hands and the goodness of the heart passes through the food through your hands. So it's important for the hands to work. This is actually the base for the meat ball. It's a veggie ball. Actually. It's a veggie ball. It's already very intact with each other. Like I said, I was making a manta for her and this was first inside the filling. So to increase the taste of the meat also lies in the power of proteins. Another type of protein is cheese and this is a beautiful halloumi cheese from Cyprus. I know there are lots of people from North and the South Cyprus. Actually, my mom was born on the South side and I like uniting everyone through videos. So I want to have a big kiss to all the islanders of Cyprus, yes. So what I'm trying to do, I'm making these big chunks for the halloumi and it will get into the köfte, the eat bowl. And I want everyone to have a taste in each slice they have. So I'm just cutting them in smaller batches like this. We ate the halloumi. I'm going to let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes and let's make the hummus. Patience does not mean to passively endure. It means to be farsighted enough to trust the end result of a process. What does patience mean? It means to look at the thorn and see the rose, to look at the night and see the dawn. Impatience means to be short-sighted as to not to be able to see the outcome. The lover of God never runs out of patience, for they know that the time is needed for the crescent to become a full moon. Basil hummus. If you check the Google, you'll have tons of hummus recipes and the basil hummus could be like if I put the leaves here and then zzz, it might work. But I want the taste of the basil to be in every part of the hummus. So what I'm going to do, I'm putting the leaves here and I want to beat them. And I put a bit of salt like this and this will help for the basil to become a puree very easily. I didn't put these thick parts because if they're there, it could be a bit leafy and it might come to your teeth. I wanted to say that if you don't have pestle and mortar, you can really thinly slice and then put something like a maybe a plastic bag on top and then beat through plastic bag so that the oils, the juice comes out. Now, the basil becomes like a spinach and that's the way we know that it's done. To collect all the taste inside, I'm putting a bit of olive oil so that all the olives of the basil moves through the olive oil. Now we're ready to move to the processor. 400 grams of peeled chickpeas. We know how to peel them by now. Again, for the perfect hummus recipe, we have the recipe here. You can go there. If you want to make a plain hummus, we add this beautiful thing here. Look at this color. I also put a bit more olive oil. I'm keen to take all the taste. You can put some bread and maybe a bit of garlic and it will be basil and garlic bread. Two beautiful cloves of garlic gets in and six tablespoons of tahini. There are, I know people who don't know what tahini is. We have a video on tahini. You can go to that here and you can even make this tahini at home. If you're interested, the link is up there. It's actually a sesame paste. And just one thing, which is lemon. What I do, I rub the beautiful lemon. Now it's the season of lemons in Turkey. Look how beautiful this is. This is a big one, so I'm just going to put the half. Normally it's one lemon. I can always add more. And the leftover lemons are great for your fingers, guys. If something is stuck in or some color changes, put them on the near the sink. And while you're gonna wash your fingers, put your fingers in and then rub them and it's beautiful. I don't put any water. I'm an ice person. I work the machine. This is gonna work for about eight to 10 minutes. And each minute I'm going to add some ice cubes. This is how you get a creamy hummus. If you want a chunky one, put some water and then make it work for two minutes. But trust me and let it work for 10 minutes and with the ice cubes, you love it. 14th rule of love. Try not to resist the changes that come your way. Instead, let life live through you. And do not worry that your life is turning upside down. How do you know that the side you are used to 
is better than the one to come. Let me see, let me see. Let you see, let you see. Oh, beautiful color and magical taste. I'm going to put this on the side. I don't want it to dry, so I'm closing the lid and putting it here. Now it's time for the patties. Here, I have a big pan. I am going to fry them. Same like the falafel, because when they're frying, they're really even tastier. Here I have hazelnut oil, but whatever oil you use for frying would be fine. Hazelnut oil in Turkey is very good. I'm going to shallow fry them, not deep fry them. I let the pan warm up. At that time, I'm going to distribute the halloumi cheese. I have some more breadcrumbs. I have small batches like that. Now, I'm going to put this in the breadcrumb. Make it around like this. You can do it whatever shape you like, but I want it like small nibble kind of things. After the breadcrumbs, it becomes non-sticky to your hands and it's beautiful like this and it's all done. I put it on the side. If your hands become sticky, there's icy water here. So I dip my fingers and it becomes non-stick. As you can see from 400 grams of cooked chickpeas, which is like 200 grams of dried chickpeas, we have 27 patties and quite a lot. In Turkey, we call this bereket. If you don't like the shape, last minute you can like pat the patties. And the smell is very much like meat is cooking. In the order of the ones that I put, I'm just like gonna turn them one by one. I'm here to smell my cafe. Yeah. Thank you. Have a look. If both sides are done, it means it's done. What I do, I put it onto the sieve and also the excess oil goes out as well. Why have you ever eaten this that I've made? I don't think so. So, it's gonna be a surprise for you too. I continue with the second batch. And as you can see now, the oil is very valuable, not just in Turkey, for the whole world. Unfortunately, Turkey is going through a big, big economical thing. So you can use this oil by filtering it a bit and then using it at least four to five times more. Don't throw it away. Let it cool and then put it into a sieve and then to a jar and reuse it. So beautiful, all done. 400 grams of chickpeas and look what we get. It's so, countdown. Bahar, this is for you, my winter flower. Thank you very much. Now, I make a hole I... like this from the bottom. Mm. What is this? This is to die for. I'm going to put, as a hummus classic, a bit of from this beautiful, fresh olive oil and some nuts, actually. Maybe you have already tasted it. has that nutty flavor and this nuts enhances it. You can also put cashew and a bit of red pepper and a mm. bit of fresh basil so that everyone knows. Then the eat balls are here. This could be a very great party dish as well. That's why I made it. For the New Year, something that you can eat cold, so you can do it much before. And also, it is vegetarian, but it's a feast. <coughs> Maybe some greens at the side if you like, and some fresh basil on the side. I'm dying. Why? It's very delicious. That cheese in it elevates it to another dimension. What is this? Well, this is actually something you can make instead of a falafel. I would say forget falafel. That's crazy about That's it. That's crazy about it. And she's the person who ate falafel in Israel, in Lebanese, in Turkey, in even Amsterdam, in Amsterdam, in, Amsterdam, York, in London, Paris. in US, even in Paris. So this is the recipe, an Orthodox one for the New Year's. This is the traditional Refika eat bowl and basil hummus. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, you know what to do. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and do it to your loved ones and share it through WhatsApp groups. That would be marvelous. That's how the word spreads and we need that. 
as you know, in Turkey. I can give you a small example. Do you know the 50 kuruş in Turkey? Now the lira is getting so, so cheap. People melt that and sell it, like 2,500 worth of that kuruş. When they melt it and the one who gets it is 3,500. That's how badly we're doing. So any kind of support would do. Take great care. Love you so much. And if we don't see each other until then, Happy New Year. While we take the photo, Bahar made the perfect bite. And this is that one. It really is a perfect bite. On the side, sweet chili sauce, also very good. The sweetness, saltiness, sourness, a bit of bitterness from the paste and the pepper, all great. This is heaven on earth. You should finish the year with this dish. Ah! Ah! Whoa!